Get ready, folks, because today we're diving deep into the Isle of Skye. Ah, the Isle of Skye. I'm already picturing those rugged landscapes and charming villages. It's more than just a pretty picture, though. The Isle of Skye is this magnetic place that seems to draw people in from all over the world. And we've got a ton of research here, articles, travel guides, all sorts of stuff. And you know what really struck me? It's the sheer variety. Absolutely. Whether you're a history buff or a nature enthusiast or just someone looking for, I don't know, maybe a little escape from the everyday. It seems like Sky has it all. So let's start with the basics. Where exactly is this magical island? Picture Scotland's west coast and then focus on the Inner Hebrides archipelago. Sky is the largest and northernmost island in that group, right there perched on the edge of the Atlantic. Perched on the edge of the Atlantic. I like that. Okay, and when we talk about Sky's history. Oh, we're talking about serious history, layers upon layers of it. I mean, this island has been inhabited since prehistoric times, all the way back to the Mesolithic period. Wow, so we're talking about an island shaped by time, influenced by countless cultures over millennia. That alone is making me want to book a flight. And once you get there, you absolutely have to visit Portree. Portree, the island's capital. Our sources are raving about it. And for good reason. It's this charming little town nestled on Loch Portree. Surrounded by those rugged hills, right. I've seen pictures. It's even more stunning in person. The vibrant harbor, the colorful buildings lining the waterfront, and those iconic hills rising up in the background, almost guarding the town. It sounds like the kind of place where you just wander, soak it all in, and maybe grab a delicious seafood dinner by the harbor. Absolutely. And don't forget to keep an eye out for those unique architectural details. Many of the buildings have a distinct Gaelic character, mm. they're reflecting that rich cultural heritage. Ah, that's what I love. It's not just about pretty pictures, it's about uncovering those stories, those layers of history. Speaking of stories, one thing that caught my eye in our research is the suggestion to try some sky whiskey. Ah, sky whiskey. Now this is where it gets interesting. You see, the landscape of sky plays a huge role in the character of its whiskey. It's not just a drink, it's a taste of the island itself. Okay, I need you to break that down for me. How does the landscape actually influence the whiskey? Well, think about the water used in the distilling process. It comes from the island's springs and streams, filtered through layers of ancient peat. This gives Sky Whiskey that distinctive, smoky, almost earthy flavor. Wow, so you're literally tasting the essence of the island in every sip. Precisely. And then there's the air. The sea air, infused with the scent of heather and salt, also plays a role in the maturation process, adding another layer of complexity. No wonder whiskey tasting is such a big deal on Sky. It's not just about the alcohol. It's about experiencing the island in a whole new way, an immersive sensory experience. Yeah. Did you know that King Charles has decided to open up Balmoral Castle for weddings? Balmoral, as in the Balmoral, the royal family's summer residence. The one and only. It'll be on a very limited basis, of course, but still, the fact that it's even an option is pretty remarkable. It's like a fairy tale wedding come true, right out of a storybook. Exactly. And it reminds us that Scotland's royal connections run deep. Speaking of magic, one of our articles mentioned new public gardens being developed in Edinburgh. Ah, yes, the new gardens at Colton Hill. Imagine strolling through those gardens with views of Arthur's Seat, Salisbury Crags and Edinburgh Castle off in the distance. It sounds like the perfect blend of nature and history, right? It really does. You know, it speaks to the city's evolving identity, finding ways to incorporate those green spaces and sustainability while still celebrating its rich historical heritage. All right, we've covered a lot of ground here, from the prehistoric past of Sky to modern day Edinburgh, and our deep dive isn't over yet. There's still so much more to explore, and I, for one, can't wait to see where we go next. Onwards and upwards, let's continue our journey. All right, let's do it. So we just scratched the surface of the Isle of Skye, and I'm already itching to go there. But before I book that plane ticket, we've got more ground to cover. One thing that jumped out at me from our research was this documentary series called Cooey, narrated by Ewan McGregor. Cooey! Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I've heard of that. It focuses on life in the Scottish Highlands. Right, that's the one. And one of the episodes features this couple who are renovating this 200-year-old cottage on the Isle of Skye. I think I saw a clip of that. They were foraging for food along the seashore. Exactly. Gathering seaweed and shellfish, living off the land, so to speak. It looked incredible, and the scenery was just breathtaking. It really highlights that deep connection to the land and sea that's so ingrained in Highland culture. 
Forging isn't just some trendy thing there. It's a way of life that's been passed down through generations. Makes you appreciate the simplicity, the resourcefulness of, well, those who came before us. Right. Living in harmony with nature, taking only what they needed. It seems like the Isle of Skye is the perfect place to reconnect with that kind of lifestyle, even if it's just for a little while. Speaking of connecting with the past, did you come across that article about traditional Scottish recipes? Oh, yeah, I did. There was one that caught my eye, treacle scones. Have you ever had one? Treacle scones. Oh, they're divine. A true Scottish delight. What exactly is treacle, though? Is it like molasses? You're on the right track. It's this thick, dark syrup with a rich, almost caramel-like flavor. Okay, you're making me hungry. It gives the scones a wonderful sweetness and depth. I can almost taste it now. A warm, freshly baked treacle scone slathered with butter. Or some clotted cream. Don't forget the clotted cream. Oh, and a cup of strong Scottish tea alongside. No, that's the perfect way to end a day of exploring. Absolutely. You know, it's amazing how these deep dives take us on these unexpected journeys. We start with a place, but then we end up exploring all these cultural connections, food, history, traditions. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion, but in a really delicious way. I like that analogy. It's a reminder that every place has a story to tell. And sometimes the best way to uncover those stories is through... Well, through our senses. Exactly. Through taste, smell, touch, all of it. Speaking of stories, one of the articles mentioned a social media trend that I found interesting. It was about this couple dubbed the Perfect Highlands Power Couple. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. Unfortunately, the article didn't go into much detail about who they are or what they do. But it did raise a good point about how social media is, I don't know, kind of shaping our perceptions of places like the Isle of Skye. It's true. These days, everyone's sharing their travel experiences online, which can be both inspiring and a bit overwhelming. It's a double-edged sword. On one hand, it can introduce us to new destinations, give us ideas, you know. Right, like that travel bug. But on the other hand, it can create these unrealistic expectations, especially when you see all those perfectly curated photos. It's like, do those places really exist? Or is it all just filters and clever angles? It's all about finding that balance, mm. you know, using social media as a tool for inspiration, but also remembering to disconnect and experience a place on our own terms. To just be present in the moment. Without feeling the pressure to capture that perfect Instagram shot. Well said. And speaking of experiencing a place, one of our sources included an article titled Top 10 Places to Visit in Edinburgh. Ah, Edinburgh. We touched on the new gardens at Calton Hill, but this city deserves its own deep dive. A city where history and modernity collide. And a top 10 list is a good starting point for anyone planning a visit. Did the article highlight any hidden gems, any places that might surprise even seasoned travelers? It did, actually. It mentioned the Writers' Museum, a mm. place dedicated to celebrating the lives and works of some of Scotland's most renowned literary figures, like Sir Walter Scott, Robert Burns. Now, that's something I would definitely check out. I love delving into the literary history of a place, you know. It gives you a different perspective on the culture, the people. Absolutely. It's like you're unlocking a secret code to understanding the soul of a nation. Beautifully put. So we've journeyed to the Isle of Skye, touched down in Edinburgh, and even explored the world of Scottish literature. Where to next? Well, one of our sources included a list of top experiences in Scotland likely to sell out in 2024. Oh, that's valuable information for anyone planning a trip to Scotland next year. What kind of experiences are we talking about here? Unfortunately, the article didn't get into specifics. It did, however, stress the importance of booking those tours and accommodations well in advance, especially during peak season. That's a good point. It's so easy to get caught up in the excitement of planning a trip and forget about those logistical details. Exactly. But booking ahead can save you a lot of stress and ensure that you don't miss out on those must-do activities. So a little planning goes a long way. Absolutely. So to recap, We've explored the history, the landscapes, and the cultural treasures of the Isle of Skye, taken a detour to Edinburgh, and even glimpsed into the future of Scottish tourism. It's been quite a journey so far, and yet I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. There's always something new to discover, even in places we think we know well. And that, I think, is the magic of travel. The learning never stops. Before we wrap up, there's one more little nugget from our research that I want to share. I'm all yours. One of the articles included this humorous little warning. It said, Side effects of subscribing to Love Scotland include sudden cravings for haggis and an overwhelming urge to wear tartan. Proceed at your own risk. I love that. It's so true, though, isn't it? Once Scotland gets under your skin, it's hard to shake off. 
It really is. I'm already feeling the pull myself. I don't blame you. All right, we've explored the Isle of Skye, wandered through Edinburgh's literary scene, and even contemplated the allure of Tartan. But as we wrap up this part of our deep dive, I want to leave our listeners with a final thought, something to ponder as they continue their day. What's on your mind? It's a question that's been swirling around in my head as we've been talking about the Isle of Skye. What is it about islands, those unique pockets of land surrounded by water, that continue to draw us in generation after generation? That's a great question. What is it about their blend of isolation and connection, history and modernity, ruggedness and charm that resonate so deeply within us? It's the sense of escape they offer, the chance to disconnect from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and reconnect with something, I don't know, more primal, more elemental. Yeah, maybe it's the allure of the unknown, the chance to step onto a piece of land that feels both familiar and utterly foreign at the same time. Whatever the reason, I think it's safe to say that the Isle of Skye has earned its place on our collective bucket lists. And who knows, maybe someday soon we'll all have the chance to experience its magic firsthand. That's a beautiful thought. And until then, let's all keep exploring, keep learning, and keep seeking out those experiences that make life, well, a little more extraordinary. Absolutely. And if any of you out there have been to the Isle of Skye, we'd love to hear about your experiences. What surprised you? What hidden gems did you uncover? Share your thoughts because we're always eager to learn from fellow travelers. Every traveler brings a unique perspective. And sharing those stories, it enriches our understanding of a place and inspires others to embark on their own journeys of discovery. So please don't be shy. Tell us about your Isle of Skye adventures. I'm so ready to hop on a plane to Scotland after all this talk about the Isle of Skye. Me too. It sounds absolutely magical. Before we get carried away, though, I think it's important to consider the impact of tourism on a place like Skye. That's a really important point. We've been talking about all the amazing things Skye has to offer, mm. but we can't forget that it's not just a tourist destination. Right. It's a place where people live and work. Exactly. One of our sources actually brought up the concept of slow travel. Slow travel. I like the sound of that already. It encourages visitors to immerse themselves in the local culture, support local businesses. And travel in a more sustainable way. That's the idea. It's about slowing down, really savoring the experience, and leaving a positive impact on the places we visit. Instead of rushing from one attraction to the next, checking things off a list. It's about taking the time to connect with the people, the landscape. To really soak it all in. To appreciate the rhythm of life in a place like Sky. You know, I think that perfectly captures the essence of what we've been talking about today. This idea of slowing down, disconnecting from the everyday. And rediscovering a sense of wonder. Finding those moments of peace and quiet, whether you're watching the sunset over the water or hiking through those incredible landscapes. It seems like every detail we've uncovered, every story we've shared, has pointed back to this idea of sky as a place to escape to reconnect and, well, to rediscover yourself. It's a place where you can just be present in the moment. Surrounded by the raw beauty of nature and the warmth of Scottish hospitality. It sounds like the perfect antidote to our busy modern lives. It really does. And, you know, it makes me think about something one of our sources mentioned about how the Isle of Skye isn't just a place you visit. It's a place you experience. With all your senses. Exactly. And it stays with you long after you've left. It's a feeling, an energy, almost a state of mind. It's been such a pleasure exploring the Isle of Skye with you today. The pleasure's all mine. We've delved into history, wandered through charming towns, tasted the flavors of the island, and even contemplated the meaning of travel in the digital age. It's been quite a journey. It really has. And through it all, we've discovered that the Isle of Skye is more than just a destination on a map. It's a place that calls to something deep within us, inviting us to slow down, reconnect, and rediscover that magic that exists in the world. If we just open our hearts and minds to it. Beautifully said. And on that note, we'd love to hear from you, our listeners. Have you ever been to the Isle of Skye? What are your favorite memories? What surprised you? Share your thoughts, because we're always eager to learn from fellow travelers. Absolutely. Every traveler brings a unique perspective. And sharing those stories, it enriches our understanding of a place. And inspires others to embark on their own adventures. So please, don't be shy. Tell us about your Isle of Skye experiences. And until next time. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep diving deep into the world around us.